people all the time always say, you're so lucky. Screw you, I'm not lucky. I worked for free. I, I was living on top ramen noodles and seaweed. In an apartment that was the size of my living room with a roommate, I did my first movie when I was 19. I didn't know what I was doing. I was the supervisor, the dresser, da da da, because there was no budget. You just had to figure it out. I don't think you could be successful in life if you think you're only good at one thing. You gotta be it all. And if you could be it all, you could be anything. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden. Stockholm is a small city and a small country, and it's really interesting when it comes to fashion. If one jacket is the trendy jacket, the whole country has that jacket. I think my memories as a teenager, I don't know how it was for other people, but it was quite dark. My mother decided she wanted to move to Los Angeles, and I thought, I really don't have anything to lose. Maybe there'll be a purpose to all the questions that I'm trying to answer. Moving to Los Angeles, starting in eighth grade, all the girls wore guest jeans. And I was just like, sort of totally didn't fit in. Like, I was always the shyest one out of all my friends, and it was really hard for me to talk in a crowd and things like that. So I feel like I found my expression through my clothing. So like I could put on something really crazy and I didn't have to say much. That was my language. That was my way of being present and being there without having to open my mouth. I feel like my crazy style might have started with my mother. She would go take these trips to Paris and come back with these crazy outfits. Like when I was a teenager, she would like always dress me up like in her like suit jacket with like big shoulder pads or like red balloon pants. My mother was a beautician and my father had beauty salons. I was always in charge of doing everybody's storefront window. When I started high school, I collected vintage clothing. I had periods where I decided I was gonna wear a different outfit every day for 365 days of the year. Like I had a Polish mother and I'm sure karma is going to hit me with my twin girls, but I was a very naughty teenager because I dropped out of high school. When she said to me, okay, you have two choices. One, you go to school and I support you, or you don't go to school and you're on your own. I mean, at one point she wanted to send me to military school. So I walked out the door. I got a job at Hard Rock Cafe, and I worked in the gift shop, and I sold T-shirts. I got promoted after selling a million fucking T-shirts and those stupid pins. And then I became a waitress. And then I dyed my hair blue and I got fired. I feel like everything in life leads to something else. Because I was like, well, if you don't like my blue hair, then I guess I don't need to be here. I got another job as a waitress at Bar Marmont. And I was in a car accident with a pop star. I'm not going to say who it is. He told me, you have to sue me because I had got a fractured neck. So I got a settlement of $10,000. I took the $10,000. And me and my friend Alex went to Paris when she convinced me to buy this Prada coat, which at the time I thought, how can a person spend this much money on clothing? This is insane. But I remember trying on the coat and I felt like a million bucks. I'll never forget the feeling. It was just like, fuck it. I'm gonna spend this money on this damn coat because I like it. And so I came back from Paris. I lived in this apartment with my friend and there was a photographer that lived next door and he shot a lot of drag queens and he came to me one day and he said, you should be a stylist. And I said, what's that? And he goes, it's what you do. You, but you have to do it on other people because at the time I would go to a lot of clubs and me and my friend would always dress up. I had a million wigs and I mean, I was definitely a drag queen in my past life. My styling was always a little bit too much, a little bit too that. And I remember people trying to change me. You're a little loud and it's a little crazy. Maybe, you know, you should tone it down because like that gap client, like mm -hmm. they don't really understand you. And I'm like, but that's not who I am. Then maybe that's not what I should be doing. My husband, Jonas Ackerlin, was looking for a costume designer to do the costumes for his movie, Spun. I went to meet him for the project and he sort of just gave me the job on the spot. I was like, well, don't you want to see my work? I'd never met someone that knew more than me and creatively like challenged me every second of my life. Together we're a great team. We sort of started doing all these jobs together that was groundbreaking. When I travel I have like 10 suitcases. I'm ridiculous. So I need options and anything can happen at any time. You always have to be ready. My rings 
is sort of like my hair. I don't do, go or do anything without my rings. I got the vest from a punk shop in New York, on St. Mark's Place. You could do a fabulous outfit with no budget. You just need to have an imagination. Like literally you can wear a shitty outfit, everything, but you get a great hat and like, you're done. My grills. I can't live without my diamonds. <laughs> Christina Dragomir hat. Oh, and I have a Givenchy nose ring. Fuck your earring, probably from a thrift shop that costs a dollar. The dress is vintage. I got it in Miami last week. The bag is Perrin in Paris, a collaboration job that I did. Oh, they're Vivian Westwood. I have them in black too. My husband gave me this watch when I turned 30. When I turn 40, I get the black one. When I turn 50, I get the gold one. When I turn 60, I gotta wait till I turn 60 to get the diamond one. But I have a caftan like collection that just keeps going. I mean, it's vintage. When I woke up this morning, this is how I felt. A scent, I felt the need to chop up my flower and put them in my hair. And I felt that I needed this makeup to contrast my pure feelings because with everything soft, there needs to be something hard. I'm rock and roll, I can't be too hippy dippy. I actually bought a pair of blue jeans the other day. It felt really weird. I bought them on my way to Miami because I wanted to be like the sporty girl going to Miami. I always had an airport look. Wow. I mean, now it's very common with celebrities, like everybody wants a styled airport look. But I was rocking the airport look way back when. My whole paths of ups and downs and this and that started something, even all the jobs of making no money. Because I had a passion and I had a vision. I was like 20 or something and someone asked me, what would be your goal? What, what, what's your dream? And I remember at the time, my dream was to cover Rolling Stone. And then the phone call came. Can you fly to New York to do the cover Rolling Stone with the Beastie Boys? And when I got that phone call, it wasn't that big of a deal. I was like, okay, well that was my goal. And now I'm there, so now I need a new goal. I feel like I'm a living proof of the secret. Because everything I've ever thought and wanted, I never for one second doubt I couldn't have it. I owned it, I thought it, I lived it, I said it, and it happens. But if you for one second doubt your own feelings and, your, and you let the fears take over, it's a lost opportunity. Madonna performed at the halftime show. I worked with her a lot before, but this is on another level. She taught me to be better at my job. And if you ask a normal person, oh, can you do Madonna and 400 people, and they would say, you're crazy. Anything is possible, you know? And I spent three months working on the show with her, which was probably the biggest challenge of my entire life. But I didn't know how people would react. After the 12 minutes that we had worked three months on were done, it was like I won the lottery. I don't know how you can beat that. I mean, she came out as a modern day Cleopatra and just owned it. So I sort of like, went into like a cocoon for like two months because I was like, <laughs> I was empty inside. I had given all I had. I know that when I've created an outfit that someone makes a Barbie doll out of or do an illustration, I've succeeded because I've inspired somebody out there with what I do. And I feel like if that doesn't happen, then I haven't done a good job. I always weigh everything I do is, is it worth being away from my children? Because every second I'm away from my children has to be worth personal growth. If I'm going out at night, I dress to impress my kids. Like, I'll buy a dress thinking, are they gonna like this dress? And so they're inspired and then they go on to like dress their friends and design outfits and draw amazing pictures. To them, I'm just their mom. Like sometimes when I go and pick up them from school and stuff, the other kids look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I mean, I've been called, are you a witch? Are you a vampire, someone asked me. I'm just, Billy and Eddie's mom. I mean, I even now have control issues. They're like, mom, we don't want to wear the same things anymore. I'm like, <gasps> I'm like, okay, when you start kindergarten, you could decide, okay? Right now, they're channeling 90s Shakira, okay? They're about crop tops mm -hmm. and scarf fashion. I mean, my children had black cribs with Swarovski crystals on them and baby Bjorn's covered in Swarovski because I was so deprived of being creative when I was pregnant and not working, that I like s literally crystalled everything they had. So they were like, they look like pimps. And then the first job <laughs> I had coming back as a stylist was Lady Gaga paparazzi video. Like I literally, I exploded. Like I, I saw Gaga and I was like, 
even deep in my career when I had done some amazing stuff, you know, I went to see free agencies that were like bigger, that do more fashion because I thought I needed to be fashion. And you know what they told me? You know, you need to assist, you need more editorial work. Right. And I went, really? And I was like, fuck you. Last year I did the cover of Harper's Bazaar and Madonna. I don't need to do 20 editorials yeah. with Harper's Bazaar. You just have to do your thing. Yeah. Do your thing and everything else will happen. And if you're trying to be like someone else or do like someone else, it ain't gonna happen. Everyone told me my whole career, you have to be in New York if you wanna be somebody. You don't have to be anywhere. You just have to be who you are. But I'm still wondering when I'm gonna be a grown up. I still feel like a kid. I'm 39, I'm proud. My life is just starting. I see myself old with my husband in the south of France, living in the chateau, running our own bread and breakfast Ockerland Hotel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> with memories from all our journeys and jobs and memorabilia, maybe. <laughs>